In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, hello everyone and welcome to this edition of Our Ryan in English News with me, Nima Chitsos. People in capital Tehran and many other cities across the country observe the birthday anniversary of Imam Hassan Mujtaba, peace be upon him. Saturday is the 15th day of the holy month of Ramadan, the day Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, became grandfather for the first time. On this blessed occasion, his daughter, Hazrat Fatima Zahra, and her husband, Imam Ali, peace be upon them, became proud parents of a radiant son. Imam Hassan, peace be upon him, the leader of the youth in heaven, was born in the holy city of Medina in the third year after Hijra. The Supreme Council for Economic Coordination on Saturday reviewed the latest economic developments in the country and the propo proposals suggested of the executive bodies. At the meeting, attended by the heads of the three branches of power, the proposal by the tax organization over expediting and facilitating affairs related to taxpayers was approved. According to this decree, the deadline for submitting the value-added tax, VAT, Return for the fourth period of the previous Iranian calendar year has been set by the end of May this year. In this meeting, chaired by President Hassan Rouhani, a report on the actions of the Market Regulation Working Group and balancing the market and implementing the previous decision of the Supreme Economic Coordination Council over prices and the use of public oversight and use of the Chamber of the Trade Unions and the Union Guilds over controlling the market situation were provided. The members of the Council decided to coordinate the implementation of the Market Regulation Working Group and the field of market management of goods and services, emphasizing the need for coordination of all agencies. In this meeting, the Oil Minister also informed the members of the Council about the implementation of oil production projects from the joint fields. The issue of increasing the capital of the Export Guarantee Fund was another agenda of the meeting, which was approved. Meantime, President Rouhani considered helping the vulnerable to be a great public duty and stressed that the first task of the non-governmental organizations is to encourage people to help the vulnerable. During a meeting with the charities, NGOs, and anti-coronavirus activists, the President said it was important to build trust. He added, it is very important that everyone does the job they want to do in their place. The president went on to say, coronavirus was one of the most important issues we faced and we weren't the only ones. The whole world came across it. He added, the problem is huge and to defeat this problem, we should improve the semantic of put policies and actions. Iran's health ministry says 85,064 patients have so far recovered from the COVID-19. The ministry's spokesman on Saturday confirmed 1,529 new cases of coronavirus infection, increasing the total number of cases to 106,220. Kyonush Jampu said 48 people have died of the disease in the past 24 hours, raising the death toll to 6,589. He added... So far, 573,220 COVID-19 tests have been taken across the country. Elsewhere, Iranian Deputy Health Minister said the number of hospitalized patients, clients, and intensive care units admissions, as well as deaths from the deadly coronavirus, has been decreasing in Tehran. Iraj Harirchi made the remarks on Saturday in a video press conference. He, however, warned some people are wandering in the markets without considering the announced health protocols, a trend that could lead to a new wave of disease. Harichi also warned about the tsunami of misinformation in some articles published in cyberspace. Now, the coronavirus, COVID-19, is affecting 212 countries and territories around the world with more than 4,072,000 people with active cases, 278,765 deaths, and the recovery of over 1,417,000 patients. Omid Haydari has a scoop. 
Millions of people continue to be quarantined across the globe, waiting for the situation to return to normal. In the past four days, reports over the origins of the coronavirus have been in the media spotlight. The German intelligence services' skepticism about the Chinese origin of coronavirus is the latest statement showing that the accusations that were leveled at China over the corona's origins was politically motivated. The German intelligence service said the allegations were an attempt to justify the United States' failure to control the disease. The report by the German intelligence service comes after the U.S. television channel CNN, Russia's Russia Today and France's BFM have broadcast reports saying coronavirus has an American or European origin. The reports say prior to the outbreak in Wuhan in China, coronavirus was reportedly in France and the home of elderly in Virginia of the United States. China also announced on Saturday that it welcomes independent research into the source of the coronavirus. The Chinese representative to the Security Council said we need to respect science and avoid politicizing coronavirus. While Europe itself has 40 percent of the world's coronavirus sufferers and the debate over whether corona originated on the continent has risen, the European Commission has advised European countries to keep borders closed to non-European citizens until June 15th. Britain has more than 215,206 active corona cases with 31,587 deaths from the virus. The British National Statistics Office has said blacks are in comparison to whites are four times more likely to die from coronavirus. On Saturday, for the sixth week in a row, Turkey went into quarantine. Turkey has over 134,000 active corona cases with 3,739 deaths. In France, dissatisfaction with the government's performance in the fight against the coronavirus has reached 83%. France has more than 176,000 active cases and over 26,000 coronavirus victims. Spain has nearly 263,000 active cases and 26,478 deaths, while Italy, one of the European states worst hit by the virus, has over 218,000 active corona cases with 30,395 deaths. Malaysia's economy minister has warned of continued coronavirus-affected restrictions as well as the on employment of 1.8 million people in the country. Elsewhere in the United States, with over 1,332,442 active cases and a death of over 79,000 people, the U.S. President Donald Trump, as a show-off, went to a mask factory with television cameras. Meanwhile, Trump's deputy, with the same tactic, participated in a humanitarian aid distribution movement. The media at once President Trump and his deputy to turn off their microphones and stop show-offs. Meantime, economists say scale of eurozone crisis is impossible to predict. On this coming Monday, businesses in several EU countries will be allowed to reopen for the first time since COVID-19 lockdowns were introduced. But social distancing restrictions mean it will not be economically viable for many to start operating again. On Friday, Eurozone finance ministers held a video conference at which they formally approved a €240 billion Euro rescue fund aimed at supporting businesses and households. The recession will be deep, and it is unavoidable. But it is in our power to shape the crisis response, from the emergency to the recovery. The new credit line should be operational by the 1st of June. Each of the 19 nations in the Eurozone will be able to apply for a low-interest loan worth 2% of their GDP. For example, that amounts to €36 billion Euro with respect to Italy and €25 billion Euro for Spain, the two hardest-hit countries. However, economists warn there are no easy answers or solutions. The situation is bleak. It's very difficult to be optimistic about, about the outcome now. 
uh, where we used to say that um, things have to fall into places for a good outcome. I mean, we now have to say really many pieces have to work together now. Also on Friday, the EU Commission hosted a citizens' dialogue event. The vice president of the institution, Franz Timmermans, outlined what he believes is the biggest threat currently facing the 27-nation bloc. A lack of trust uh, in each other between member states and between people. Uh, the, the feeling that uh, uh, I should look after my own interests because I can't trust my neighbour. In a number of EU countries, scientists continue to work on trying to find a COVID-19 vaccine. There is criticism that not enough testing is available for the general public. As lockdown restrictions are slowly eased, there is confusion over the value of wearing a face mask. This issue has been raised in the European Parliament. There was a huge controversy with the WHO since the beginning of the pandemic on the masks, the surgical masks, the cloth face masks. Are they useful? Could they be dangerous? Some experts suggest masks can augment the risk of infection because of humidity and potentially retaining the disease close to your face if the mask becomes infected. The problem is we tend to touch our face more often when wearing a mask. In any case, using one of these on public transport is now compulsory in many countries, including here in Belgium. The key advice, however, has remained consistent. Keep your distance, practice good hand hygiene, and try not to touch your face. Jerome Hughes, Press TV, Brussels. Iranian foreign minister has called on the United Nations to take a swift action and hold the United States liable for any consequences of its unlawful withdrawal from the landmark 2015 nuclear deal and its unlawful reimposition of unilateral sanctions against Iran. Here's more. In a letter to the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres on Saturday, Mohammad Javad Zarif explained about several matters related to the unlawful withdrawal of the United States from the nuclear deal, officially known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, the JCPOA, and the unlawful imposition of its unilateral sanctions against the Iranian people and government in blatant violation of its obligations under international law. He also also brought to the UN chief's attention matters related to multiple continuous and grave cases of violation of the United Nations Charter, in particular Article 25 thereof, that are jeopardizing the UN credibility and integrity and threatening international peace and security. He added the US President Donald Trump on May 8, 2018 officially announced his country's unilateral withdrawal from the JCPOA in material breach of Security Council Resolution 2231, to which the JCPO is annexed. Zarif said the unlawful U.S. act of unwarranted withdrawal from the JCPOA and the reimposition of its sanctions entailed the U.S. responsibility under the U.N. Charter and international law. He emphasized that the U.S. has violated Resolution 2231, which was in fact submitted by the United States itself and was adopted unanimously by the Security Council on July 20, 2015, to endorse the JCPOA. And that's a wrap. Goodbye.